So we've seen who delivered the message. We've seen who received the message and passed it on again. What was the message? Well, the Messiah has come. So how is this message actually worded? Well, we see it was worded that the Messiah would come as a child, God with us. We see it in Isaiah 9, 6, where it says, For unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We see in Matthew 1, 21, She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. We see it in Luke 1, 31. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. And then in Luke 2, verses 11 and 12, Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. The Messiah was coming, and he was coming to save people from their sins. And again, as we already read in Matthew 1, 21, it says, He will save people from their sins. In Luke 2, 11, Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. We also see that light came to the darkness. In Isaiah 9, verse 2, Because Jesus is the light of the world. We see lights everywhere at this time of year, don't we? We see them on trees. We see candles. We see them in houses, on houses, in windows, on fences. They're everywhere because light dispels darkness. Light dispels darkness and therefore makes everything clear. Jesus came to dispel the darkness, to reveal and then deal with sin. The world Jesus was born into was a world of darkness. There was violence, injustice, abuse of power, homelessness, refugees fleeing oppression, families ripped apart and bottomless grief. Does this sound like a world you know? Because it's just like ours. And here's the thing. They couldn't fix their world on their own without Jesus. And we can't either. The world could not fix the darkness. And it can't fix it today. Vaclav Havel, the first Czech Republic president, said in 1994, A turning to and seeking of God is needed. The human race constantly forgets he is not God. Turning and seeking of God is needed. The human race constantly forgets he is not God. The world needed God's light. Jesus told us this in John 3.19. This is the verdict, he said. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Hmm. Light came into the darkness. The Messiah would come to save people from their sins. And he would be born as a child. But also the Messiah would bring peace. He is the Prince of Peace, it says in Isaiah 9 verse 6. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In Luke 2.14, it says, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. Christian author and pastor John Piper talks about who this peace is actually for. Because in the English Standard Version and the New American Standard Version uh, um, of the Bible, it says, Peace comes to those on whom his favour rests. Or, that's NIV, and then the others are, or with whom he is pleased. So the peace of Christmas and the incarnation is not for all people. Hmm. 
Not everyone will accept and receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour. Many will choose to stay in the darkness. Why? Because that's where their power is. That's where they're comfortable. That's where they can be their own God. Where they can willfully live in sin. Only those who believe or choose to submit to the authority of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, will receive his peace. The key that unlocks God's peace for us is faith. Paul tells us in Romans 15, 13, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the people, so by the power of the Holy Spirit. The New American Standard Bible says, instead of trust, it says, fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Trust, believing, pretty much the same. So it's about trust and belief, and that's faith. The world has shown that it cannot produce unity and peace. We've seen it. You know, organizations like the United Nations formed to bring peace to our world, and now they seem to want to divide the world. Only God can bring peace. And we can only have that peace if he is pleased with us, if he favours us. And that requires us to, to, to submit to Jesus as our Lord and Saviour in faith. And the last part of the message is where it leads. The incarnation is crucial, not only for our salvation, but because the incarnation leads to eternal life, which is Jesus. We have the incarnation, God coming to earth to save us, the message of Christmas. We also have the atonement. Jesus lived to die for us on the cross to pay the price for our sins that we could never pay, our ransom. And there are some passages that refer directly to that. John 3.16, we know this. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Romans 6.23, Paul said, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Christ Jesus our Lord. And Isaiah 53.10 says, Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. And lastly, from Matthew chapter 20, verses 26 to 28, Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. He paid the price for you and for me. This is the message. Jesus came to this earth, God with us, to save us from our sins and give us the gifts of salvation and eternal life. So as we conclude today, what do we do with the message? The answer to this question would seem pretty straightforward and common sense. What do we do with the message? We tell people, don't we? Isaiah told people. He, said, he told them what would happen in, in Isaiah 9, 2 and 5 to 7, that light would come to dispel the darkness. The Messiah would be born a baby like us to save us. Matthew told people just by his record in Matthew chapter 1, he went through the lineage of Jesus for the Jews because this was important for them to know, to be able to believe in seeing where Jesus came from as prophesied and then he told them about the incarnation and why jesus came but it was more than these two the shepherds told people again we saw that in luke chapter 2 they couldn't contain their excitement at meeting the messiah and then at telling everybody what had happened you know they would have been telling everybody an angel came and then there was a host of them singing glory to god in the highest so we went and found them we saw the Messiah. Do we do that? 
Do we get that excited? There's the Magi in Matthew chapter 2. They told Herod about the birth of the real king when they said, where is the king of the Jews? Herod wouldn't have liked that. We'll touch on that next week. But they would have told their people back in their own country when they went there. They would have said, we found him. So what about us? Who are we going to tell? And what are we going to tell them? Because we need to tell people. We need to tell our families, our friends, the people we work or volunteer with if the opportunity arises, our neighbours. The list is endless. There are so many to be reached. And we start here in Burnside and Coes Creek, in Nambour and Bly Bly and Yandina and Nooseville and Wombai and Palmwoods, Rosemount. We start here. And we will tell them while we're singing Christmas carols together with them that God came to the earth in his son Jesus Christ. We will tell them that Jesus died on the cross for them and for every person so that people's sins could be paid for. That they could be part of God's family again, be reconciled. We'll tell them that Jesus rose after three days and he conquered death so that we can have victory over death. That we can have eternal life with God now and after we die. And Jesus comes again. We tell them the gospel. So let's sing it, shout it from the mountaintops, loud and strong and clear. Jesus came. He paid the price for us to be saved and he conquered death and he's coming back. Let's be ready. This is the message of Christmas. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great message that we revisit every year. May we shout it, sing it, that all would hear. May we do it, Lord, with gentleness where we need to and respect, but always proclaiming who you are and your message of Christmas and beyond. Help us to do it in your strength, in your power, not our own, so that you, not us, will be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. So are you ready to tell people? If so, go tell it on the mountain. Let's worship.